When most people think of the father of amateur photography, they think of this guy, George Eastman. In 1888, Eastman invented roll film, photographic emulsion on a flexible strip. He packaged the film in a camera he called the Kodak. You took 100 pictures, then sent the camera back to the factory, and they would return your pictures and the camera loaded with another roll of film. Hence the slogan, you press the button, we do the rest. As the ad says, anyone can use it, and they did. But for the real start of amateur photography, we need to go back 17 years to 1871. Up until that time, to take a photograph, you not only had to carry a camera, but you also had to carry an entire darkroom wherever you went. This pretty much limited photography to professionals working in a studio and a few brave souls. However, in 1871, the physician and amateur photographer Dr. Richard Maddox developed the dry plate. Now photographers could leave the darkroom at home. 26-year-old Eastman also played a role here by developing a machine to coat the plates in 1879. While the Kodak became popular among casual photographers, well into the 20th century, the serious amateur preferred dry plates. Here is the camera my grandfather used, the Seneca Chautauqua Jr. folding bed camera for 4 by 5 inch glass plates. It was made in Rochester, New York, probably between 1902 and 1904. The lens was made by Wallensack Optical Company, also in Rochester. The camera folded up and could be carried in this convenient case along with the number of plate holders. Marked f-stops varied between f-16 and f-256. Shutter speeds were instantaneous, B, and T. On the left was a viewfinder that could be used to get the composition approximately right. There was also a scale for setting the focus. But one would typically use the ground glass screen on the back of the camera to determine precise composition and focus. The plate holder held two glass plates shielded from light by the dark slide. The holder would be inserted between the glass screen and the back of the camera body. The dark slide on the holder would be removed and the shutter tripped to take the picture. When developed, there would be a 4 by 5 inch negative on the glass plate that could be printed on the bromide papers available at the time. Since I have my grandfather's camera, I thought I would embark on an adventure and try and take photographs just like my grandfather did at the beginning of the 20th century. The first thing I discovered was this rickety tripod which my grandfather used. I'm just amazed that anyone could take pictures with such a rickety tripod considering the long exposures that were required. In case you're wondering why your cameras, even today, have a B setting on the shutter speed dial, this is the reason why. The bulb. You squeeze the bulb, and as long as you hold it, the shutter will remain open. So what really enabled me to start on this new adventure is the discovery that I could purchase some dry plates. So there is a U.S. company, J. Lang Dry Plates, which uh, provides dry plates in a number of different sizes, including the 4 by 5 inch size that will work with my grandfather's camera. I bought these uh, from Freestyle Photo, which is one of my go-to places for photographic supplies. There are also another supplier, Zebra Dry Plates, in Slovenia. Now, that's where I ran into one of my first problems in trying to behave like a 20th, early 20th century photographer. When I tried to buy some supplies from Zebra Dry Plate, my credit card company decided that a purchase in Slovenia must be a fraudulent and put my credit card on hold. 
So the first step is going to be I'm going to have to load the drive plate into the drive plate holder that will go into the camera. Now that will have to be done in the dark, but fortunately these drive plates are orthochromatic. They're only sensitive to blue and ultraviolet light so that I can do the loading under a red safe light, which is a little bit easier than doing it in total darkness. So after I uh, let my eyes uh, get accustomed to working under uh, dark conditions, I'm ready to try to load the plate holder. So I take the dark slide out and then open up the box, unwrap the plate, take the sensitized plate out, and then try to get it in there. Good, it went in. And then put the dark slide back in there. Now I'd simply repeat that process on the other side so I can I will have two sensitized plates per plate holder. We're at the Don Edwards National Wildlife Refuge on San Francisco Bay, and I'm about to take the very first picture using my grandfather's camera. This camera was made in 1902. Now the first step is going to be to adjust the composition, and the only way to do that with this kind of wooden tripod my grandfather had is by moving the legs around, adjusting their length. It's pretty difficult. Certainly not like a modern tripod with adjustable head. In fact, I'm going to spare you that effort. I've set it up ahead of time. So the next step is I'm going to check the composition and check the focus. So the first thing I'll do is I'll set the shutter speed to T so the lens will stay open. And I'll set the f-stop uh, so the lens is wide open. And then open the lens get the ground glass screen, put the dark cloth over me and the camera, and check the focus. Focus looks pretty good, so I think I'm all set. So we'll close this. We've now set the shutter speed to B so I can control the, how long the shutter is open with the bulb. And I'm going to set the f-stop or lens aperture to uh, US64. This camera is so old it used the universal system uh, for, for aperture openings. It's equivalent to F32 in the modern system. Okay, now uh, we're going to put the plate holder in the back. And we need to determine now how long the lens should be open. These plates are sensitive to blue and also to the UV. And the amount of UV that's reflected off the surfaces here can depend on not only whether the sky is overcast or clear, but it can also depend on the height of the sun in the sky, which is determined by the time of day, is determined by the month of the year, and is determined by your latitude. Uh, so taking all those things into account can be pretty complicated. Most people probably developed a sense for what the exposure is based on the experience, but some people back then also published tables of exposure, similar to tables that Zebra Dry Plate did publishes today. So the next step is to remove the dark shield from the plate holder, and I've determined that the exposure I want is about 
uh, one and a half seconds. So I'm going to just kind of judge that by, by counting. Here, here we go. OK. Put the dark side back in. And now we'll take the plate home and develop it and see what we see. So here we are back in my makeshift darkroom. I actually took several exposures while I was out at the Don Edwards. And I've developed the first plate. And it came out pretty dark and high contrast. So for the next plate, I'm going to develop it by inspection, which was a pretty common practice back in the early days of photography. So what I will do is I will watch the shadow areas while the plate is developing. And as soon as I see some density appear in the shadow areas, I'm going to pull the plate out of the developer. That should result in lower contrast. And voila, the resulting glass plate negative. And this is what it would look like as a print. Well, that's the first leg of my journey into early 20th century photography. I found it pretty interesting and a bit challenging so far. There's probably plenty more to learn, and if I come up with anything more interesting, I'll be sure to share it with you. Until then, I'm Doug Stinson. Thanks for watching.